In this tutorial, I'll be going over how to upload and download in Finch using Rhino. To get started, I'll go ahead and open the Finch plugin by typing Finch into the command line. And I will just dock the plugin down here in the bottom left corner. I'll go ahead and log in with my Finch account under the account tab and under the advanced tab, I will just make sure that auto receive changes from the web app is turned on. This allows for live syncing back and forth with Finch. The next thing I'll do is select the project that I want to work with, hit enter, and then from the variant drop-down menu, I will select the variant I want to upload to, in this case, it's Rhino, and I'll hit load variant. I can see here that I've received some layers up in the layer panel. Finch uses these layers to send data back and forth between the web app and Rhino. So that means that anything that's placed inside of this Finch parent layer is subject to be edited by Finch, whereas anything placed outside of it, such as what I have here in the default or the context layers, will not be edited or touched by Finch during the syncing. Inside of Finch, we have two main layers, the building mass layer and the custom geometry. The building mass layer contains both the center line and the stairwell attractor, which helps with the generate floor plate algorithms. And then the custom geometry is used to send up any context, such as nature, people, context buildings, things like that. So I've already added some curves in here to make my building mass from. So I'll just extrude these out to create the form. So now I've created a couple of different extrusions that I would like to use as my building mass. When uploading to Finch, I always need to make sure that I'm uploading closed union objects. I can upload meshes, extrusions, any type of geometry, but it does need to be Boolean unioned and closed before I upload it. So I will select all four extrusions and hit Boolean union over here. Now I have one closed poly surface. I'll select it and then change its layer to the building mass layer. And now I have my building mass ready to be uploaded. The next thing I'll do is select the center line and then I will just draw a polyline from midpoint to midpoints. The final thing I'll do before I upload is add some context geometry. So I've preloaded some here and placed it in this context layer. And I'm just going to now switch all of these sublayers and drag them into the custom geometry sublayer. It's important to note here that the colors that I've set as the layer color for each of these objects will be the display color in Finch. So now the water will be displayed as blue and the site will be displayed in this gray color. Once I've added all my geometry and I'm satisfied with my model, I'll hit sync. And now I have my building up inside of Finch, which I can begin to work with and generate in. Once I've finished generating my building, I can jump back down into Rhino to continue working with it there. Back inside of Rhino, I can select my project as well as my variant and hit load. And now I see my building is loaded in Finch. So if I want to get all of this data into Finch in both 2D and 3D, I can hit the advanced tab and select import 2D. And now I see that I have received quite a few layers here. If I head into the top view, I can see that now I have the 2D plans of each story of my building all laid out here, both on a programmatic level as well as a spatial level. Next, I can head back to the building and under the advanced tab, I'm going to hit import 3D. And once that loads in, I can see that now I actually have some solid geometry here. But first, I'm going to go ahead and unlink the file and remove the data of the live sync so then I can understand what I actually have imported a bit better. Here, I can see that I have imported closed poly surfaces of all of the walls that I've created and generated inside of Finch. So this way, I can now continue working with my 3D model here in Rhino.